Carol, this is Brett Goldstein, and welcome to Your Money Show. Hey, okay. Here we go again. Yeah, a little round of applause there for you. All right, you all set? We're all set. So you are the uh, publisher of the uh, Trends Journal, and uh, you've been uh, doing a lot of forecasting. You have some uh, top ideas or top trends of 2015. And uh, one of the trends that I thought uh, seemed interesting is this uh, price war that you think is uh, going on. Well, you can see it in a lot of different areas. For example, the big one that's right in front of everybody's eyes are oil prices. And, you know, they've gone down from their high in June of uh, 2014. They, they hit a hundred and fifteen dollars a barrel for Brent and now it's trading around sixty dollars. So the first reaction going on in the markets was, well this is payback for Putin, you know, we're gonna bring down those oil prices because when they peaked they were right at the point when the Ukraine and Middle East was heating up. And and we started looking into it a lot more and we said, now this isn't about Putin, it's bigger than that. You have commodity prices across the board whether it's copper or iron ore, not only oil, uh, nickel, you know, you're hitting five and a half year lows. How come? Well, demand is down. So it's a supply and demand issue. Yes, we have a lot more supply of oil in the States, but again, you look at copper, for example, 40% of the copper that's produced each year is taken in by China. And then you look at China. Hey, China just came out and revised their uh, GDP numbers once again, and their forecast for future GDP. You go back two years ago, China said, we're going to maintain a GDP of over 7.5%. And now, of course, it's around 7%. And they said, around the 7, a little low, is going to be the new normal. So demand is down. So, but so now you I take to... it out of... I got to ask you a question though, because you're you're talking about demand is down, but a lot of people are looking at this and they're going because gas prices are down and everyone's saving money. Yes, and that's that's a positive on that note, but there's also the negative on it because it also means that there's not a lot of job growth around the world. So yes, it's a deflationary cycle. In the old days, they would call it a depressionary cycle. That's the reason prices are going down. Demand is going down. So, uh, yes, it's, it's helping the people, you know, with their pocketbook because energy plays a big part in our lives. But when you look at other prices going, uh, you know, you look at other prices, they're not going down. But at the same time, income is going down. Median household income is below 1999 levels. Since 2009, when they began quantitative easing, and brought those uh, interest rates down to, you know, record lows near zero. 95% of the income growth has gone to 1% in the United States. Those are facts. So, yes, the lower gas prices are helping people here. But we're not making the kind of money that we were making before. Exactly. And, the, and what it's doing, it's signaling a worse picture. Because then you keep putting the pieces together. I mentioned this, we're talking about commodity prices. So you're in the retail business, and all of a sudden your profit margins are getting really thin because you have to start selling stuff before Christmas Day. You're knocking 50 to 70% off the price. So look at your profit margins. Then you look at the profit margins of Target, for example. How many people are they going to fire? Well, they're raising aren't uh, a lot of uh, retail places. They're raising uh, you know, to $10 an hour or something like that. So aren't people making more money? Who could live on $10 an hour? 50% of Walmart's employees are part-time. If they were to work a 35-hour week, 50 weeks a year, it's the grand total of $17,900. Yeah, that's not a lot. You can't live on that. So here's what we have. So here's what I'm hearing from you so far. We have... Gas prices and energy prices going down. We have income going down. We have shrinking profit margins on corporations. What is the average person supposed to do? Because it seems like everything is going to hell in a handbasket. The average person is really shafted. And you look at the numbers again. You look at the Pew Research Center study that came out in December. They showed that the the 
the gap between the rich and the poor right now in the United States is worse than it was during the during the Gilded Age. Well, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Again, you look at the numbers. They're coming in all over the place. You, you, you saw the number that came out uh, from Oxfam that they put out uh, about uh, three weeks ago that showed that in 2016, 1% of the people, 1% of the people are going to have more money than 99% of the people in the world. And you look at the latest numbers again. You go to Forbes. They just came out with a study that the, the wealth of the world's billionaires surged past $7 trillion. And that's Forbes. But again, what is the average person supposed to do here? It has to be a bigger change. It has to be a, a societal political change. Without that, it's the, the average person is really stuck in a, in a very rough spot. And they have to find where are they going to find the growth and income opportunity. So here's, here, here's where they are. Anything having to do with the aging population. As, I mean, you, you baby boomers, I mean, in, in a year we're going to be 70. In a year. I mean, who would have ever thought? And so you have an aging population around the globe. Anything having to do with aging to stay healthy, to stay wealthy, and to stay wise. The number other one has to do, and it ties into that, with food. You look what happened. Again, all things are connected. All of a sudden, McDonald's announced we're not going to buy those uh, chickens that they're shooting up with all those antibiotics. Why? They're losing market share because of places like Chipotle Grill and Panera's and others that are going to cleaner foods. And by the way, the term clean foods, the New York Times gave me credit with that term in 1993 I came up with that. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. so 35, uh, 35 years. And all of your information can uh, be found in the Trends Journal uh, magazine or uh, periodical here. It's uh, trendsjournal.com. Uh, is where you can get it, and uh, you know you have a, what is it a quarterly, monthly? How's it work? We have a quarterly magazine, the Trends Journal. It's fifty pages, full color, online or print, and then of course we have the Trends Monthly to keep you up to date, and we put out trend alerts as needed, and we do trends in the news each weekday, Monday through Friday, uh, fifteen minute news broadcasts of the trends going on. From gold to oil to geopolitics. Well, it's a good thing you brought up gold because there are two things. You know, number one, you talked about food earlier. So you you know you're talking about the lowering prices of um, of income. Income is going down. Gas is going down. Oil is going down. But then you you talk about in the Trends Journal in the in the, in the most recent um, quarterly that you have, food prices are going up. The real cost of living. Uh, and this was astonishing to me because I was reading this. Butter is up twenty two point five percent. Butter. The, 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 yep. I mean, you would never think that something like butter is up tw as much as twenty two and a half percent. The consumer price index numbers were rigged by uh, Bill Clinton. He's the first one that started it in in earnest. And and matter of fact, that article, the grand manipulation is written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who is the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Ronald Reagan. And I mentioned, you know, I'm not a, you know, he, of course he was a Republican. I'm a political atheist. I'm not so so you're, not a, you're not a Democrat, because you talked about Clinton a couple times. I was going to ask you whether or not you're Republican. No, no. Is it, no, I'm, I, I, I almost went broke when I came out against, not against, I said what would happen with the Iraq and Afghan wars. And one of my books, which since he gave Honey Boy, they're making it into a movie. And Doris Roberts is playing my aunt Sitzy. And uh, it she's begins, from uh, it Everybody Loves Raymond, right? Yeah, she was the woman that played the, the mother, right, of Everyone Loves Raymond. And it opens up with I'm getting blackballed from all the media. I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, you name it, from O'Reilly to Brian Williams. And I, I, when I said what would happen and people didn't want to hear it, they didn't want to hear me. So, no, I'm a political atheist. I began my uh, career, by the way, running political campaigns in Westchester County in New York, and I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. 
and I was also a chief government affairs specialist of the chemical industry and worked between Chicago and D.C. throughout the 70s. So, you know, I've been around. I know what the score is. I, To me, the Republicans and the Democrats, and I don't say this sarcastically. I mean it with all, all honesty. They're no different than the Bloods and the Crips. They're murderers and they're thieves. They start wars based on lies, and they steal our money under the guise of too big to fail, giving tax breaks, loan guarantees, and benefits to their big buddies. So to me, when I, we make these forecasts, and if anybody goes to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts' site, uh, paulcraigroberts.org, they'll see he's coming from the same place. There's so, no allegiance to a party. Right, the allegiance so is to truth. I, I want to get to two things that you're, you're, you're bringing up a lot of stuff, and this is all great stuff. Uh, you, you talked about gold earlier. So uh, you talk about in the Trends Journal uh, that the U.S. Federal Reserve is driving down gold prices to make the dollar look stronger and has uh, pushed interest rates into negative territory, which means that the government is charging you for the privilege of buying bonds. That's right. You look what's going on right now, not only in the United States, worldwide. Again, you look at gold price fluctuations. I'll give you an example. January 22nd, not ancient history. Gold began the new year on a high note. Boom, shot up 100 bucks. All of a sudden, the legs knocked out of it. January 22nd, another member of the Goldman Sachs gang, former head of the European division, Mario Draghi, now head of the uh, European Central Bank, had been saying that they were going to come up with their plan of quantitative easing. And they did. They came up with it. They're going to be pumped. They're buying bonds, corporate and government bonds. This isn't capitalism. In capitalism, this kind of thing does not exist. Buying corporate and government bonds anyway. You look at when the day that they announced it, and you can see the decline in gold prices following it to a T. And by the way, you go back to the last time gold's going up, it goes down. Gold, when gold was going up, when there was fear in the markets, when the United States, the Federal Reserve, announced that they were going to end quantitative easing. Three days later, three days later, they announced out of Japan round two for Abenomics. And they also announced that their pension funds are going to be buying stocks and bonds. They only bought Japanese bonds before. Now they're going to be buying world bonds and global stocks. So it's a grand manipulation by the banksters. So it's all tied together. So why are gold prices down? I'll ask you this question and ask anybody listening. You could buy a bond last week in Germany a five-year bond, and you're guaranteed by buying that bond that you're going to get less money back in five years, negative yield. Why would you buy that bond? And I'll ask the second part of the question. Do you think gold prices will be higher if you're buying a bond for safe haven? Do you think gold prices will be higher in five years? I don't give financial advice. I'm only asking that as a question. I I, I don't really know. Obviously, no one has a crystal ball, but, you know. But would you guess it be? Probably not. So you don't have to answer. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, 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 I really don't know where uh, you know where prices were going to be. I, I was kind of on you know thinking that gold prices, you know, would would certainly be going you know up if the market was going down, and obviously vice versa. But that hasn't happened. Well, the market has it going down because of all the cheap money being dumped in. Well, and then and the, the, negative and then, interest rates. Well, and then there's so the other problem with the bonds. Is you look at you look at 50% of the, the rise in the equity markets have, has a, occurred from corporations buying back their stock, borrowing money for nothing, and buying back their stock and driving the price up. And the other money is you're looking at merger and acquisition activity back to 2007 levels. So that's why your equity markets are going up. So the equity markets look strong. But again, when you go down to the basis, there used to be a time, once upon a time, when people actually used to put money in a bank and they called them savings accounts, and they got interest that was above the inflation rate. Yeah, and I they also remember you got a toaster, too. What? I also remember you got a toaster when you opened you up an account. You got a toaster. <laughs> well, yeah, you would open up a bank account, and they would give you, like, a toaster, or they'd give you, like, uh, you know, some type of kitchen appliance or something like that. But, uh, you know, they don't do that anymore. Now they now they just charge you to use the ATM. Yeah, and, and if you're in, if you're in uh, a country in Europe, many of them, you got to pay them to keep your money in the bank. Negative interest rates. This is on what we're talking about. 
has never happened before in written history. This is the first time ever that you've, you're seeing negative yields coming out of countries. And by the way, now negative yields also just came out of... Uh, they, 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 it didn't start like that with Shell and Nestle, but they've, they've, they've driven the yields down to negative on corporate bonds. And then yesterday in France... Uh, they, 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 they issued, uh, some bonds, 500 million euro worth with, uh, with no interest rate. Well, well, let's uh, take a break here for a second and just talk about the trendsjournal.com. This is a 50 page, uh, online subscription for the quarterly and then you get the monthly and, uh, you also get, uh, some, some other alerts and stuff like that. And, and what is the price of the journal? Because it just seems 50 pages seems like a lot here. $99. So for $99, you can get up-to-date information of what's going on in the world. And, you know, I sign up for this, uh, you know, magazine or this online magazine, and I get all of the trends. And what is it, I mean, you know, for the listeners out there, I mean, you're talking about prices going up. You're talking about another thing here, which is, uh, you know, great unemployment numbers are, uh, you know, meaningless, according to this article here. What is it I'm going to get here just, you know, by getting this information? What am well, I supposed we, to do here after I find out that gold is being manipulated and unemployment numbers are totally useless? What we also do is we, we show you the positive trends. So, for example, where, where, where are the pop culture trends going? How to tie into them? Something that no one's talking about, retrograde 2.0. You, for example... Once upon a time, there used to be a thing called quality. We were talking before earlier about all of a sudden McDonald's is not going to be using antibiotic chickens. It's a big deal to go from farm to table. It used to be like that all the time. It's a big deal now when a restaurant buys an old bank building and that was beautifully, you know, whether it was Art Deco or from the era that was gorgeously constructed with fine elements in it. And now it's the novelty. Well, we're going to start seeing quality again become the norm. So what we're telling our subscribers is move in this direction. Go keep going toward quality. That's where the marketplace is going to grow. And also, one of the big things that we have, we do a lot on aging. All of the opportunities there, whole health healing. The Again, when I mentioned... Uh, earlier, clean foods and organic, food, water are going to be the biggest trend opportunities that are not going to go away. You, you saw a big study that just came out, like this should be shocking news. They found out in cities where they brought down smog levels, young kids weren't getting lung disease. Wow, blow me away. Never would have felt, thought that one before. You're going to see a big movement toward more and more Again, what we're writing about that not many people are looking at, dominant energies, goes back to clean beyond it. Think about this. Here we are in the 21st century. We're talking about oil before, and we're burning fossil fuels. Once upon a time, from Grover Cleveland down to Julius Caesar, the world leaders rode to their coronations and inaugurations in horse and buggies. And then all of a sudden there was an automobile. That was the alternative means. Then it became the dominant. We are on a breakthrough of dominant energies that are going to replace wind, solar, geothermal, biofuel, and fossil fuel. Now you're talking about more things than just fracking. You're talking about, I mean, energies beyond solar and wind and water and all that stuff. Exactly. And that's we we have one of the best science writers, I would venture to say, if not the country, the world, Ben Davis. And in the Trends Journal, we break down where the dominant energy opportunities are going. We name the companies. We put you in the direction. You make up your own mind. The motto, by the way, of the Trends Journal is think for yourself. And Which I find a lot of people don't do these days. They uh, are, are just too busy, uh, you know, hiding in their den watching television because, uh, you know, Work and family and everything else is too tiresome, so, uh, you know, they don't necessarily take the time to uh, read this stuff. Well, again, you know, it's their choice. You know, think for yourself, the motto, that was taught to be by my dear father, 
May his soul rest in peace. And I'd be riding around with him, you know, and he, he, I'd be shooting my mouth off as a little kid, and he'd look at me in an, in an Italian with a dialect from where we came from. He'd say, Papa Wow, which is actually Papa Gallo, parrot. He'd say, stop repeating what everybody else is saying and think for yourself. And I heard that, I heard that maybe about five or six times. And I kept getting older, I kept hearing it less and less. And then I realized, before I say anything, I better have the facts. And this way I can make the statement in an intelligent way. So it's up to the people. When people ask me, how are things going to turn around? I make it very clear that the future is in everyone's hands. And it begins with the individual. And to me, it's when people get in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually and regain their courage, dignity, and respect, that's when you're going to see a brighter future. If you want to watch the Kardashians, knock yourself out. You think Siley Myris, Miley Cyrus, whatever her name is, is music, that's fine with me. You think rap is music, that's terrific. To me, it's not, it's not instrumental, it's a sound, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, uh, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, or any of the greats on the piano, or Drums or whatever to Pat Metheny all the way through. Up Pat Metheny is one of my favorites. But anyway, so let, let, what I'm saying is it has to go back to quality and it has to begin with the individual. So let me ask you about two things because obviously this is Trends Journal, right? So the trend for uh, you know the rest of the year, uh, you know, what do you think or you know is going to happen with the economy? You know, uh, from what you're talking about, it seems like. You know, income is coming down. Gold price, uh, gold prices are coming down. Oil prices are coming down. Banks are charging you more just to have, uh, you know, money in their banks. Bonds are negative yields. It, it sounds like, uh, you know, the whole country is going to come Holy to an end. Holy cow! It doesn't it's not to come to an end, but you know, these are bubbles. As a matter of fact, you even heard Mark Cuban. You know, saying you know on, that the tech bubble. Yeah, the, well, the uh, we were talking about the uh, net neutrality the other day, where he thinks that's the end of television and the internet. Yeah, he said there's no liquidity, and 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 it's true. This is all this is all based on speculation. So, to me, again, only speaking for myself, I believe this is a time to be very conservative in what you do, and I'm not a speculator. I'm, it's not where my mind is. It never has been. So, for me, I only buy gold and real estate. Gold and real estate are what you're investing in personally. That's what I, that's my, my total investments, gold and real estate. Dr. Lego loves real estate, so, uh, you know, uh, when he uh, gets a little bit better here, he's uh, going to be so thrilled that you said that because uh, every person that we talk to, uh, you know, he's always into the real estate situation. Well, the, again, but I'm buying, I'm up here in Colonial Kingston, New York, two hours north of the city. I bought a 1750s building, a 1774 Academy, and a 1663 Dr. Jensen House. On the most three buildings on the most historic four corners in the U.S. So I buy for beauty, I buy for passion, and of course I buy for resale. But not that's not my, I'm not a speculator. I'm, I look long term. And that's also my investments for gold. I don't speculate in the gold market. I buy for possession. But when you I, when I, you for, I buy for gold, gold though, in years. right? But you're talking about the manipulation of gold and how everyone, uh, the government, is uh, putting down the gold prices so that they can get a little bit, uh, you know, stronger dollar. So, so when I began buying gold, I bought my first buy in 1978 at 187.50 an ounce. So if you keep looking at, you know, the uh, the, the, so the, the long term, the long term trend for gold exactly, is up. Exactly, as I say, I buy gold for my golden years. So, to me, again, not telling people what to do, but as a trend forecaster, we see the bottom of gold right around where it is now. And you could put this on. You have it on tape. Yes. And, uh, and here's and here's the caveat. We think we think the downside is possibly possibly another hundred dollars lower. 1100 is our bottom for gold. So to me, that's not a big downside risk, not considering what the upside potential is. 
Okay, cool. So this is all in uh, Trends Journal magazine, the online uh, publication. It is uh, trendsjournal.com, and uh, you get uh, everything for the low, low price of uh, 90 was it $99? Ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. Online edition. It's yeah. like ninety nine dollars. Uh, ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall. So uh, thanks very much, Gerald, for uh, being on the program. We appreciate it. a little uh, round of applause again for you there. Hey, thanks so much. Ashley. And uh, listen, we're going to have you on the show again because uh, you know we want to you know we want to make you stick to your trends there. So we have you on record as saying gold prices at eleven hundred. So we're going to check back with you. Uh, Okie doke. All right. Thanks very much for being on the show. Thank you. Bye bye now. Well, that's unfortunately all the time that we have. Make sure you uh, go check out Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com. Uh, Mr. Gerald Salenti gave us some great information, so go check that out. Make sure you sign the petition at thepensiondepartment.com and also check out the Pension Department uh, Human Resource website. Make sure you protect yourself, your rights, uh, when you're at your job. Make sure you're not get taken advantage of. Go check out the site. That's all the time that we have for this program. Nothing on the show constitutes an order to buy or sell securities. You should always consult an advisor before buying or selling anything. All my opinions are my opinions and no one else's opinions. If you don't have an advisor, I can appoint one for you. And all my securities are done with American Investment Planners through Cataray Grant member FINRA SIPC. See ya.